Good morning, everybody, and happy Australia Day. As our anthem says, we are one, but we are many. I'm not too sure if we know what we're really singing about when we say such things, because uh, we seem to be many, but not one at all. Uh, the one and the many is actually a philosophical conversation, so uh, we won't get into that today, uh, because today we're looking at worship. We're in the Psalms. If we were in Ecclesiastes, then we might consider the other. Uh, today we're looking at Psalm 26. Uh, let's consider David's motivation in writing this song. When Saul died, he left behind a son named Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth was a weak king leading ten tribes of Israel with loyalties that were already shifting to the house of David. Bana and Rechab were of the tribe of Benjamin. They should have been loyal to Saul's house. But when opportunity presented itself, they stole into Ishbosheth's home while he was sleeping and stabbed him in the stomach, cut off his head, and took it to David, thinking it would win them favor in the new regime. They were wrong. David said, Once a man thought he was bringing me good news when he told me Saul is dead. I seized him and killed him at Ziklag. That was the reward I gave him for his news. So even more, I must put you evil men to death because you have killed an innocent man on his own bed in his own house. That's all in Second Samuel chapter 4. And then David wrote this psalm to protest his innocence regarding the slaying of his enemy. David was living in the land of innocence, and he wanted to make sure that he stayed there. That means not guilty. If you're innocent, you're not guilty. Innocence is a very rare experience. We understand innocence from the point of view of forensic righteousness, the innocence that Christ provides to us through his death upon the cross. Jesus was innocent. He died and covered our guilt so that now we live as though we never sinned. I'm not so much talking about that as I'm speaking into the experience that we have. Not many experience the sense of innocence. Innocence is very rare in our world. Guilt is the common theme of man. And the fruit of all fear, it's the fruit of war and torment. And verse 12 of Psalm 26, David says this, My feet stand on level ground. In the great congregation, I will praise the Lord. In other words, he's saying, I'm on the level. Maintaining your sincerity and your integrity and your innocence, that's the goal. The greatest challenge to your integrity comes when you have opportunity to profit from somebody else's failure. Politicians are masters at this. We highlight others' shortcomings in order to make ourselves feel better, and we turn the focus on what others are doing wrong to lessen the guilt and blame that we are feeling. The moment somebody points out our failure, we say, but you did this, or you said that, all in order to justify ourselves. At that moment, we're no longer on the level. We have gone down a level. We've sunk below the level of integrity and sincerity and innocence. How do you stay on the level in this roller coaster world of ours? How do you maintain your integrity? How do you hold on to innocence? David says it is surprisingly simple. 
And so he begins in verse two with this phrase. He says, test me. You never know when the test is going to come. With God, it's always a spot test. This test is not about how many Bible verses you know or how many times you've prayed. It's your heart that is being tested. You're going through your day, everything seems like normal, and suddenly the heat is on and you're under the spotlight. Are you going to pass the test? Somebody accuses you. Somebody's judging your motives. Somebody threatens your position. Your wife questions your weight. You get cut off on the expressway. Your friend gets the promotion. Your boss tells an unseemly joke. They no longer want you in the choir. It's a test. It's a test. Are you going to pass the test? It matters not whether they are right or wrong. This is your test. Be careful now. Every motive, every attitude, every reason why you think what you think and say what you say and do what you do is on the line. At that moment, it's between you and God. In reality, every other person has simply become a player in the great cosmic controversy. As Shakespeare once said, all the world's a stage. At that moment, all heaven is focused on you. This is where you get to see all that is wrong and right within your heart. Now, if you fail the test, don't worry. You'll probably be tested again tomorrow. Confess the unevenness of your walk and the unevenness of your talk and always aim for a higher level of integrity and after test, after test, after test, you'll find that change will come. And then eventually you'll be on the level and you'll be able to do what David did. You'll be able to worship with abandonment in the great congregation because you'll be innocent and free of all of the guilt that you once walked in. God bless you, have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.